Hey guys, it's me, Moon Pies, brought to you by NetStories.com with this week's Tube Tuesday. And what I'm doing these past few weeks and the next few weeks is going over people's channels that requested to be reviewed last month. Back in mid-May, I had a video asking for people to request. I got dozens and dozens of requests. I can't get to them all, but I'm going to get to as many as I can. And here I am going over the Sleepy Hollow XX. And the Sleepy Hollow XX is a, a bunch of guys from Kansas, and there's some young YouTubers making comedy videos. There's a big action element to them, and they're really good with special effects. They have a lot of uh, you know explosions and blood splatters and stuff uh, when necessary in their videos. Um, and a lot of times they have 138 subscribers, 44,772 views. Now, what I like to do in these cases, uh, when, as I've done many times when I'm looking at a channel, is look at some of the more recent videos, and I did and also try to find the video that has their biggest audience and in this case it was back in December of 2010 it says a year ago but it was actually in December of two years ago uh, they had a video with Kaponk trick shots I got 25,000 has gotten 225,000 251 views and if we click on it and I have the volume down and I'll tell you why I have the volume down for the video it's basically a video of them doing trick shots with Kaponk uh, which is basically uh, I guess we can call it beer pong for kids it's a game that involves a ping pong ball and a cup and you gotta land it in there um, and these guys made a bunch of trick shot videos and did a big compilation of it and there's an ad thing let me click out of this ad I'm exiting out of the ad I'm not actually clicking on the ad um, and it has it says con contains content from music shake uh, which I believe is a music creation program uh, so I'm not sure why it's here but I apparently I guess if you use their program they get they could take the revenue share on the YouTube either that or these guys will have this video monetized and that just is there for whatever reason but usually that this is a claim by a company which is important when you make a video not to use other people's music and that includes even YouTube's free sharing that they have a program where you can you know substitute your music their music for theirs you shouldn't do that because that then the artist that artist gets the revenue share not you if you ever become a partner or the right to monetize your videos so this video is pretty cool um, obviously it, it does well one thing you'll notice here is that even though it has 25,000 views it's still getting a lot of views and they can't monetize it because it has someone else's music there's really no promotion here for the rest of their channels there's nothing here at the beginning there's really nothing here towards the end of the video um, you know you just basically have you know fiend the end and that's all you really get now later on in their new in their latest videos they're really good about that because they have you know like 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 all the big youtubers do they have the video program where they have it set up where you have two or three little boxes set up and you can click to watch another video with you know five ten seconds left in the video they put all that stuff great stuff this doesn't just because you can't go back and edit the video of this doesn't mean you can't come back and edit the annotations like right here towards the end of the video and especially at the beginning because a lot of people aren't going to make it through all the videos right right at the very beginning just use the YouTube annotation feature and right here just put a box or up here uh, saying you know come check out you know our latest videos or subs anything subscribe anything to get people a took to the rest of the channels more, this cha this video right here has more views than the other 28 videos that they've made combined and I don't know how often the frequency of these videos maybe some of most of them came you know a year and a half ago and not so much today but this is the video that they should be using to as a calling card even if it has someone else's music uh, go in and put in boxes um, annotations with links to the to the newer content or just to the basic landing page of the channel that's what you want to do with whenever you get a good video whenever you get a viral video that's exactly what you want to do now the cool thing about this is that you know when we go back to here um, these guys are really good with special effects they're really good with comedy and back in the early days of YouTube in the early days of YouTube it was pretty easy um, well not easy but you had the smosh um, which got big on one song one video they actually did a parody of the Pokemon uh, song uh, and it became huge and they used that to parlay it into, into, into the Smosh some of the biggest YouTube partners right now doing their comedy channels uh, then you have on the special effects side you had Dane Bow which about four years ago was putting out videos of like peeps uh, in microwaves and would blow them up into giant chickens um, and his ability to make these cool special effects had him a cult you know got him a cult audience uh, but what happened is he was able to parlay that into the annoying orange which is now gonna have it you know it's, its own television series and it's its own you know Toy Story exclusive toy line so back then since there weren't a lot of people doing a lot of people were just you know were, were afraid to exactly how to use YouTube uh, it was easy to stand out doing that these days it's not so easy so you have a case where these guys have 138 subscribers 44,000 views um, and this stuff, I mean, it, it's if you look at the videos and you look at the, or Smosh's earliest work, it's pretty comparable as far as, you know, like, like, you know, kids just having, you know, young adults just having fun on YouTube. 
Um, and what happens is, of course, there's just so many people that it's hard to get noticed in here. And here, well, here there's another one that has a, a video that has 4,000 views. Another one of their videos that they could probably use to cash in and, uh, you know, get people going to check out other stuff. But uh, if you look at their videos, a lot of times you try to do so how can you promote a comedy video? It's very hard. Um, sometimes you have something like here they have they had a few videos where they were actually parody they have a couple parodies of of, of Geico uh, videos uh, like Geico playing with knives and then there's another one Geico with spoons uh, somewhere around here I think it's down here. Um, yeah, here a stair jump and spoon tab. Um, you know, there's like a series of videos where you can try to maybe appeal to people. Or if, if I was them, I would actually be posting on Geico boards, Geico's YouTube channel, or wherever anybody that posts Geico commercials on YouTube that's not necessarily Geico, and uh, either cr use it as a video response or at least put in as yeah, I have a funny parody of a Geico commercial and put the put the ad there. Try to make it so it's not spammy. Uh, but a lot of times, if you have something that people that may enjoy something, you know, go ahead and do it. Um, you know, just like here, the, the, their latest video is the sandwich, and it's a case where they basically just put Tabasco on a sandwich, and the sandwich uh, um, gives the guy superpowers, whereas gas becomes flames. Um, it's hard to market that. I'm not, you can't really go to a sandwich lover's site and say, "Hey, check out this spicy sandwich," or something like that. But you don't, you don't know until you try. And that's the problem with comedy. With with comedy specifically, you don't know exactly who the ideal audience would be. Uh, but you know, if these guys would go onto like Lonely Island and link to one of these videos, say, "I just uploaded, you know, you know, a sandwich that would make Andy Samberg proud," uh, or anything like that, find the people that are leading uh, the comedy area. And in this case, comedy. If any anybody's making videos that scripted stuff, you know, it can you can even have stuff where it's serious, whether it's improvisational comedy, whether it's scripted comedy, whether it's action. Find the people that are doing it the best and try to become your their friends. And, and not necessarily like, oh, be my friend, uh, but by going out there and saying, giving them compliments, showing them that you understand their material, and then posting something related to your channel. And if they don't check it out, which they probably won't, especially the bigger, busier YouTube people, other people reading the channels, re reading the comments on their videos will say, hey, this person sounds like they know what they're doing. They're, they're obviously being respectful. Let me check them out. It's really the best way for people doing comedy to get noticed. Basically, it's a two-step process. Find your biggest videos, and in this case, they have one with 25,000 views and another with more than 4,000, and use that video as a calling card. Promote that, wallpaper the heck out of that thing uh, with, with annotations, which is a simple YouTube thing you can put in on After Effects and link it to your channel, to your other, further uh, comedy channels, and do that, and also find every video you have and see where can I promote this single individual video? Any video that you're proud of that you've uploaded on YouTube that doesn't have the views you need, you need to go out there and find places you can promote it. Within YouTube, uh, there's video responses, and you can only send a video response to one video at a time, or as comments directing people to your page. It's how you get noticed on YouTube. Because sooner or later, you're going to be the next Smosh, you're going to be the next Dane Bow, and maybe five, ten years from now, I'm saying you're going to be the next Sleepy X, the Sleepy Hollow XX. Thanks, guys. See you next week.